Now, did you know that prior to 1990, the USGA and the RNA had different sized golf balls approved for play? You see, the USGA had a golf ball approved with a minimum size of 1.68 inches, whilst the RNA had a ball that only needed to measure 1.62 inches. In fact, when it comes to competing in the open, most of the American golfers chose to play what would be commonly known as the British ball because it flew further and it was a bit easier to shape in the wind. Stay there, ball. Stay there. No shaping, just about straight. Ah, it's down the left, turning a tad. I need a good bounce to get over that bunker. Keep going, keep going. Front left, we'll have to take it. 1990 was when it all changed. The USG and the RNA finally agreed that the golf ball should be 1.68 inches and a minimum weight of 45.93 grams. But the question that is on your mind is, well, why the hell are you telling us all this, And Well, I'm telling you that because the ball I'm using today from Callaway but it doesn't comply to those stats. It is in fact a different size golf ball again, but it does in fact still comply to the rules of golf. You see, the thing is when I did my research on the minimum size of a golf ball, I found plenty of facts relating to that, which I've just relayed. The one thing I couldn't find was anything that told me there was any maximum size of golf ball you could in fact have in play. Yet this ball from Callaway is in fact bigger than the norm, it's 1.73 inches. Now that not might sound a great deal, but as you can see, we need to put these two balls side by side, the standard super soft against what is the super soft max. There is a visible difference. But the question is of course, why would anybody want a bigger golf ball? It doesn't seem to make any sense to me. In fact, I'd have one initial concern. Be right. That concern being, well, the bigger the ball gets, the smaller the hole becomes. Not that it matters if you don't hit the hole. And of course, what we need to do here today at Hollywell Golf Club is, well, we need to put their theory to the test and see just in fact, is this bigger ball stop any better to the average golfer and the standard size of that 1.68 inches. And when I say better, Callaway claims this ball to be more suitable for those with slower swing speeds. It also suggests it launches the ball higher than normal. Go. And we shall find out. I haven't even threatened the hole to see if my theory about bigger ball means smaller cup. I should have point out that in doing some research about this ball, I did read that my golf spy readers or 40 percent rather of their testers found that this ball did launch higher than a standard golf ball now of course the obvious thing to do would be take this ball inside and start to recall some dry ball data and compare it to the launch of another golf ball the forgiveness the distance what happens with that slower swing speed or we can just bring it out here in reality when you get lies like that and see what kind of difference it really makes in terms of performance. That's the best shot of it all day. So the plan is very, very simple. You're gonna see me hit a number of shots. I'm gonna play driver, I'm gonna play irons, short irons, long irons, chips, uh, putts, and we'll see just how this thing performs. And can I notice visibly any difference in terms of the performance of this golf ball to what we commonly know as that standard size golf ball? I'm interested. Right, we'll get down and take a little bit of shelter from what is a pretty windy day up here at Hollywell. And perhaps the perfect time to test this thing because it is really, really interesting. I think I'll start by saying I really like the feel of the golf ball itself. It's uh, super soft, as it suggests, but it feels good off the driver, but it's particularly good off the putter, off the short end of the game. Like I said, I really like that softer feel. But what you're gonna see me start off by doing, hitting a couple of drives, they were very straight, which makes a change really pleasing. Um, in terms of the launch, did I see any difference? Eh, maybe not. I think I'd certainly fall into that sort of slower swing speed characteristics and uh, 
All I can say is I hit a couple of really good drives with the ball, but did I see anything different? No, in fact, what I would suggest is off the face itself, it feels that soft that it suggests in your head at least that it's not as fast off that club face. But that's just the driver. It does get very much more interesting. So next up, we'll talk about irons and what did I see in terms of performance? Well, arguably very similar to driver. I never noticed visibly any great difference in terms of ball flight, in terms of that launch. Hit the ball okay, felt super soft, but at this stage, still no major differences. But they are about to come, trust me. You see the major differences for me, well they were down the shorter end of the bag and that was whether I had a wedge in my hand or whether I had a putter in my hand, the ball looked incredibly big. And when I say that, on a tee, when you've got a big driver head in hand or a fairway wood, then it doesn't really look that much different. But then when you put your club behind the ball, when you've got your putter or your wedges, it is so, so different in terms of visible size. And especially when you've been used to playing the same ball for so, so long. I think one of the big deals for me would be if you moved over and played the super soft Max Golf Club ball, I think you'd have a real issue in switching back because all of a sudden, just that minute difference that it seems has played tricks on your eyes and you would swap back from the larger ball into the smaller ball and I think you'd start to struggle a little bit in terms of your confidence. So the thing is, there's a strong argument to suggest this is once again all about what's between the ears because if you think you've got a better chance with a bigger golf ball, then by all means, go ahead and use one. It's a good strike hand. Stay there, ball. Stay and sit. The one thing I will say, and I said it earlier on about the irons and the feel, I love the feel of the golf ball and the fact that these come in at around £20 a dozen in the UK, whether you want the Super Soft or the Super Soft Max, I think it's a tremendous value golf ball. And like I said, from a feel perspective, I think it's superb. There is one other scenario which I find quite interesting. That's when the ball is nestled down in the rough. Now, if you think about it for a minute, a bigger ball just sits up that little bit more. Now that just might be me thinking a little bit weird, but uh, if you look at these clips, once again, I think you can see quite visibly just which one of the two is the bigger golf ball. And for some of you out there, you might just think you've got a better chance of getting it out. Nah. Putter's not on song today, but what are my overall thoughts? Well, quite simply, I have seen nothing to suggest this ball is any better for my golf game. I've also seen nothing to suggest it's any worse for my golf game, to be quite honest with you. I'm a strong believer that uh, you've seen videos before that golf ball certainly does make a difference, but I think you've got to understand where you're at with your swing and what you're looking for from that golf ball. And unless you are, I think in the sort of top end single figure golfer then, you're not really going to get the performance benefits that you can do from most premium golf balls. So something like the Super Soft, like I said, irrelevant to whether that be the standard size or the max, is a real good, decent performing ball. And as you can see from the wind out here today and the way that camera's wobbling, is it's put through its paces, it's performed incredibly well and probably a lot better than I expected it to. But in terms of the size of the golf ball, I'm not buying into that one, I'm afraid.